Hey, what's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint, and if you followed me for a while, you know I've played a ton of games. I've played all these games, but I want to play them again. Top 10 free-to-play games to play again in 2020. Uh, this is going to be almost like a vlog, because I, I have played these games before. I've covered them probably multiple times before. Uh, some of these games I cover yearly. Uh, you know, we play a lot of these online games as a services. It's important to do refresher updated, you know, reviews. So with 2020, I'm doing a huge push on uh, basically doing videos that are, it's like, uh, you know, like, uh, is blank worth playing 2020? Uh, you know, is it worth playing then? Is it, uh, you know, what's it like uh, with the new updates? Uh, you know, so I I'm going to be trying to play these games again, and I'm excited. So these are the 10 that I'm excited to jump back into and I'm going to have fun with, and ones that I am very much planning to do reviews on here. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens and we'll see when that happens. Depends on when they have their expansions, when they have their, like the next big update or whatever. I can tell you right now, our number one is going to be the one that I'm going to be doing the, the fastest and the quickest. But yeah, uh, without too much time to waste, uh, let's go ahead, let's jump into the top 10 free to play games to play again. All right, so the first two games I want to talk about that I'm going to be playing is going to be War Thunder and World of Tanks. These are two games that I've been mentioning, uh, I think, pretty frequently throughout my career. Uh, namely in the series talking about uh, games on Steam that are popular, that are free to play. War Thunder and World of Tanks are always up there. Though I, I'm going to count World of Tanks, I also World of Warships, and just the World of series kind of as a whole. I'm going to try those games out again, but really the one that I want to focus on is War Thunder. That's always been the one that I've come to and I've just, I just always had a lot of fun with. And uh, also, I'm really confused because World of Tanks Blitz seems to be really popular. I don't, I don't know why World of Tanks Blitz is like more popular than normal World of Tanks, or what's going on with that. I guess I need to find out. I need to, I need to do that for you guys. But for me personally, I'm pretty excited. Looking forward to War Thunder. I might play some other games, uh, somewhat in the genre, but most of them kind of fall flat. You know, like what happened to Dreadnought? I don't think I want to talk about Dreadnought. I might play Crossout though, but that's kind of a different game. Anyways, so yeah, War Thunder, definitely. Number nine, Warframe and Destiny. Uh, these are two looter shooters. Uh, Destiny borrows a lot from Warframe, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of its own thing, right? It's a little bit different. Uh, it's free to play now, so I guess I should go check it out and uh, just kind of, you know, do that little refresher. Uh, now that it is free to play, I know some other people have talked about it, but also now that it has some expansions and like, you know, is it actually better or is it still the same kind of shitty grind fest that it was before? And then Warframe, is it still the amazing grind fest that it was? Uh, though with all the drama going around YouTube about it, um, I think it, it might be slowly turning into a shitty grind fest, uh, which is so, so easy to do. Uh, but high hopes for Warframe, that's going to be the one that I'm really looking forward to. But I think uh, Destiny, it's been a, I, I completely skipped Destiny. I actually refunded it. I was going to do a full review. I No, I wasn't about to be a part of that. And I'm very reluctant, even after going free to play, and even after departing Activision, to to actually jump into it. But 2020, uh, you know what? I should probably do it for you guys. Fortnite. I should look at Fortnite again. Yeah, I wrote down Fortnite. I should play Fortnite. I really should. Uh, it's a game that, in so many ways, I, I applaud it. I talk about it a lot. I I, I love I, I love and celebrate Fortnite. Uh, so often and just my even my daily life, you know, I just I it just end up talking about yo the, the concert that he's had in Fortnite so great You see the new event in Fortnite or just talk about some of the mechanics um, and why it's really engaging I think as an esports and I, I do need to really pay more attention to esports as a whole But regardless Fortnite is a game that I was pretty good at actually back in season two And I think I could do some a couple of really fun videos with Fortnite some challenge videos um, but mainly like Really need to ask and answer the question, you like, uh, how hard is it to get into Fortnite in 2020? Because uh, it is kind of a sporty game, isn't it? And I, I, I love me some sports. Uh, not, not physical sports. Played football, did that. I'm done with it. Uh, and no, I, I love, I love the idea of competitive gaming. Uh, that's kind of my, my bread and butter. That's where I come from. Uh, Halo 3 background gears, Call of Duty. You know the game battles, MLG days. Yeah, but anyways, it's been a while. Time to get back into it. I think Fortnite is the game to do that. Next up, we have Terra as well as Blade and Soul. Terra is getting an engine update, so whenever that happens, I'll jump in. And if it's going to take too long, then I might still just do a refresher on it. Uh, but it, 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 that's that was one of my biggest complaints, other than the really boring leveling, uh, was the fact that it, it seemed very unoptimized. Blade and Soul also, a lot of people complain about that. I kind of saw that too, but by that point, I have a more beefy machine. Um, both these games, I got to end game, 
so I should be able to more immediately jump in and do a proper is it worth it, even though they're MMOs. Uh, I should be able to do that, especially with Blade and Soul. But yeah, they're getting engine updates. Uh, Unreal Engine 4. It's going to be kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Spellbreak is not free to play. See, I think I, I, I don't really know. They know what uh, the, the direction they're going to go in. Spellbreak, I think, should have been free to play already. It probably should have been free to play early access, but they, they also moved away from Steam. Uh, they went to Epic. So I think that can kind of work. I guess Dauntless went to PS4, so that's really good. It kind of worked for Dauntless. I don't know. Da it, Dauntless, is that is that popular anymore? I don't know. It was kind of popular for a moment, and I don't know. Spellbreak um, could, could kind of reclaim some glory. Obviously, people were excited about it. It got a lot of views on YouTube pretty quickly. A lot of people were talking about it. And then it went to Epic, and then uh, that was it, right? <laughs> so anyways, you should be able to get into the beta for free very easily. Just ask. They're just kind of giving away beta access constantly. That was apparently one of the reasons why they went to Epic. But yeah, anyways, it's a cool game. It's just like, please be, please be free to play like now. Yeah, halfway on the list, uh, we got Albion Online, which is a game that I did do a full review for. Uh, it was an episodic review. It was one of my first episodic reviews uh, where I, I, I did a lot of videos on each individual aspect of the game. Like I really dove into it uh, and I was not rewarded by YouTube for that. Uh, you guys did not share the videos well enough. Um, maybe it was just a game that, um, you know, it had the attention, but it had a lot of negative attention. And yet the people who are watching my videos were diehard fans of Albion. And so there was just so much toxicity going around and it just didn't feel good. But I actually really enjoyed Albion. Uh, I, I had the most fun in the beta, but actually maybe more like the alpha. The game changed so radically, but it's still a very interesting game that maybe doesn't deserve mixed reviews. I, I think there's maybe it's a more peculiar game. Uh, it's not quite the Ultima clone that it wanted to be, but it's also something different. I don't know, the balance was really all out of whack for the economy, but I think it's really coming on its own now. I think Albion Online is actually here to stay for real. And um, this game that has had so many evolutions, not always in the right direction. Um, I, th I think it's time that, you know, I do a refresher and really call it out on if it's still got some bullshit or if it needs to be rewarded and applauded for, you know, some really great and awesome changes. Uh, it's Guys, it, regardless, even as a bad game, it's still a unique experience and as free to play, it's worth at least checking out. So in 2020, is it worth really considering as like a main MMO or something? We'll figure that one out. Uh, number four is Never Winter. Never Winter is a game that I kind of skipped because it was one of the first games that I realized it wasn't an MMO. You know, games like Dragonist or Vindictus or like Path of Exile, they're constantly touted as like MMOs, even though Path of Exile developers have written a public letter saying, please don't. But uh, Neverwinter is one that a lot of people call out as an MMO and I played it and I was like, not really. Um, I just, I'm just ju I'm just diving into dungeons with a party. Uh, and you know, I was I wasn't in the mood for that. So I went and played other games, you know, actual MMOs. But now that uh, I am really falling in love with like games like Warframe, looter shooters, stuff like that. Um, and games like Dark Souls, just general action RPGs. And I and at the time I was playing Dragonest, which I had so much fun with. So I think it's time to jump back into Neverwinter because it's still ha it's got so many updates. And I know I met a couple of YouTubers personally who really cover the game, and they they're just such fans. Um, also, I'm getting into Dungeons and Dragons in general. So yeah, I think it's time. I'll do a refresher come 2020. Number three, Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2, um, I think I got a couple ideas for some videos. Uh, I just want to use this moment though to kind of talk about why I haven't talked about Guild Wars 2. And basically whenever their, uh, I don't know, Path of Fire expansion was coming out, I was talking about some, uh, some classes and they DMCA'd my video. Yeah, uh, they it's a false claim. I, I, you know, I just used, I wasn't even using video gameplay. I was literally using just like screenshots, not even screenshots. It was art. It was concept art. I used concept art, talked about the expansion and they DMCA'd me, which put a strike on my channel. Like it was serious stuff. So because of that, I refused to mention or anywhere on my YouTube channel, the MMO that I was playing at the time, the absolute most. I love Guild Wars 2. Anyways, now that it's 2020, a lot of time has passed. Um, there's also kind of a lot of drama going on with Guild Wars 2. I think you guys want to know what the real situation is with the game as a whole, so I might do that. But then also, uh, you know, just maybe do a video talking about, um, you know, what, what's it like getting into Guild Wars 2? Uh, some tips and tricks. Also, the, the free-to-play content. What What is it all including? 
and overall, you know, what has been my experience with Guild Wars 2 throughout its lifespan. Because I really like the game, and I think a lot of you guys have kind of misconceptions, even if you've tried it, uh, which is going to be the case with most MMOs. So yeah, come 2020, Guild Wars 2, back on the menu. Dauntless number two. Dauntless is a game that uh, I think recently became popular again. Uh, when it was first announced, it did not have much players. Uh, they kind of trickle fed players into the beta and then it, you know, they put it on Epic. They put it on Epic Game Store and that didn't do too much for it either. Also, Dauntless has this bad habit of not up, not really doing much. Uh, they will desperately need like three new weapons. Uh, they need it to players. They need players to more quickly get into the real game uh, because the monsters at the, I guess, near the end game. I don't know what you'd call that, but uh, hours and hours and hours and hours into the game. Then you start to finally, after you kill like the same monster 10 times or whatever, you finally start to get into like what makes Dauntless actually special. But then, uh, by then you also don't have too much armor customization, in my opinion. Uh, and then also like, again, the, the weapons are kind of straightforward and the weapons are pretty similar to Monster Hunter weapons sometimes. Though some are pretty unique. Uh, there just needs to be more variety. Basically, Dauntless is a pretty empty game. But we will see come 2020 uh, their next big expansion. We know how it does. But um, I think with its PS4 launch, it got more popular. But I don't know if that's really sticking. I don't know if Dauntless has the sticking power that Monster Hunter has. It's got that potential. I think we all know that. So we're going to see if it lives up to it next year. And number one, Path of Exile. Obviously, uh, this is gonna be actually like literally in a couple weeks. So my birthday is December 14th, the day before Path of Exile has a big old expansion where they're gonna push forward the end game. And I'm, that's it started. It's part of their big push um, that they had at Exile Con or whatever, uh, talking about the, the future of the game. Uh, now they're gonna have a new campaign come like late next year, I think, and a bunch of other stuff. The, the Path of Exile always expands. It is always growing. It's similar to Warframe in that extent. Um, actually, I could probably do a top 10 most expansive free to play games. Uh, yeah, yeah, th those two are definitely like the top pretty much right next to the League of Legends. Um, but yeah, Path of Exile is always, always adding on new abilities, which you could just do such crazy things with it. Always adding new end game, um, you know, so they're, they're, they're going in all directions all the time, but it's a very cohesive direction, very unlike Warframe which I really appreciate. So because of that appreciation, uh, coming a couple of weeks here, I'm going to be covering that new uh, end game. I'm going to cover the, uh, you know, the full gameplay experience. I'm going to be streaming it and it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. So by 2020, I should have multiple videos out, you know, fully fleshing out what the experience is of Path of Exile for new players, um, talking about the end game, uh, you know, the different possible ways to play. Some people just play Path of Exile just to trade. You know, it's one of those games, which is pretty fun. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty excited, looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully you guys are too for this game and all the rest that I talked about. Hey guys, that's it. Those are my top 10 uh, free to play games to play again in 2020. I'm going to be playing more, obviously, such as Paladins, probably Realm Royale, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe some others. But, um, you know, I, there's just some that I have more enthusiasm for or I know that in the future, uh, you know, they have very clear expansions or updates that are happening that I can, you know, more quickly latch on to. That it's better for the algorithm. It's better for you guys because that's when new players are going to be, you know, engaged in the game. And also, so many times I've done first looks where it's like, why didn't you wait for the next expansion that comes out next month? So I'm going to align my videos to expansions, to updates, and then, you know, the, it, it, that's just the way it's going to work, okay? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not going to explain myself, okay? It's, it's just a YouTube thing. But anyways, hope you guys have fun. But if there is a game that is getting a new update or maybe a relaunch or something like that, like Critical Reboot just happened, maybe I should cover that like immediately. Uh, so let me know, guys. And it, I don't just play free to play games. I don't just play online games. I play all games. It's Skylink kind of like games, games, period. I freaking love video games and not even just video games. But if you guys have any thoughts, feelings or ideas of any kind, let me know. The channel is called Skylink like Games, but it's it's the friends and family show. OK, so thank you so much friends and family. I hope you had fun with the video. All I can ask is you keep that hype alive and maybe subscribe and like and stuff like that. But I will see you again next time.